What up, what up? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Mode IJ, and right now I'm tiptoeing in my Jordans, man. YouTube is on the verge of whooping your boy's ass. If you don't know, now you know. I got two copyright strikes right now, so I got to make sure I don't fuck up no more. We losing the whole channel. I was sending out emails. I'm contacting people that I know. I'm hitting up directors, writers. Someone please contact Tubi. At least remove one of them motherfuckers off the channel. Please let me get at least one up off the channel. Please. I'm begging you. They're trying to get me. I didn't do a live last night. I didn't get to do no predictions today. Oh, my goodness. They were on my ass. Mm -hmm, mm. It ain't no pause moment, man. This is a this is a real world situation here, y'all. This is a real world. This is worse than anything I've ever had on YouTube. For some strange reason, out of nowhere, Tubi said, <laughs> "You really think you' about to be watching our shit?" And they unleashed a wrath on me. I'm talking about two strikes, shit, a whole bunch of stuff just getting slapped. I said, "Oh, oh, oh, oh." I was just watching the free movies. So we will not have to be on this channel for a while until I can figure some stuff out. Um, Tubi, man, answer those emails, man. I just sent out like eight different emails. 
So hey, just re- hey, all, everything is gone. Well, not the ones you gave me a strike. So they still on there. I need you to remove the strikes. I'll I'll take them off the channel. Just remove the strikes for me. That's all I'm asking. That's all I'm asking for. Well, if you guys haven't heard, the Power Universe is low key. They low key playing a little dirty at the moment. They could have waited until BMF was over with. They could have waited till BMF was over with to start announcing all of this stuff. They said, hell no, nah, we getting Power's Origins. And then the next day today, they said we got a cancellation of season four. Now, we supposed to be talking about episode three already ready, but we weren't ready for what the hell happened in Power Universe. So now not only do we have the Power Universe, we got Power Origins, and now we got BMF Immortals. Now, episode three. <laughs> I don't know what we're going to have on Tuesday. We probably still going to do 2B Tuesdays just over on Rumble or on the Patreon, but that will open stuff up. I might be able to do. Matter of fact, since we're not going to do 2Bs no more, I can probably do Shogun on Tuesday nights and then Wednesdays we still have the more you know, and then we'll be back on schedule. I don't know, but hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Right now it's, um, huh. You know, I was kind of down yesterday. I'm at the gym working out. Like, yeah, nigga, we getting it. I'm the king of Tubi. I look down and it's email after email after email. I say, what the hell? I'm thinking, okay, maybe somebody's commenting, but I don't have any notifications about. Uh, wait, wait. We regret to inform you that we hit you with a copyright strike, you bitch ass nigga. I said, wait a minute. What they call me a bitch ass nigga for? But oh well. We back in the building. My name is Moda J. This is Are We Ready? We do this each and every Thursday night. I would say 3 p.m. Eastern, but it's 4 p.m. Eastern till March 31st, and then we'll switch back over, and I have my daylight savings. Uh, episode 3, we got Loco. I'm not going to lie to you. In between, ep- does it seem like it's a long time in between episodes on BMF? Maybe it's because I didn't do as many videos. But in between episodes on BMF, it's like, okay, we had it, and then... We got a Monday mistakes, but then we got Tuesday, Wednesday. It's like, man, what the hell? What the hell? I thought, I thought the doctor said, Dr. Maurice, I thought they were just catching up. Is this how you catch up with an old, an old acquaintance? You know what I'm saying? Your old sweet thing? What y'all think about Dr. Maurice? Is he a stand-up guy? Is he legitimate? Or is Dr. Maurice part of the community? I'm talking about the community of dogs. But he ain't really a dog, though, because it's not his responsibility. Lucille is the married one, so it's really not his responsibility not to talk to her. You know what I mean? Yeah, I got I got three months to tough it out if they don't remove these strikes off. So I might not be breaking down trailers or anything because stars, well, stars ain't ever gave me a copyright strike. Stars are just, you know, saying hit me with the copyright. But fuck it. We here now. If it hey, if we're terminated, we had a good run. I love y'all. And uh, you know, well, that'd be it. Because if they terminate this channel, they terminate the mo you know. So you know, that'd be into that. And then it's, I doubt I start all over. I'm just gonna be honest with you. I doubt I start all over. But all right, here we go. Episode three. Are we ready? We do get a clip for this week. We do have a clip for this week. It actually just dropped like an hour or two ago. But it's the same storyline that we all been dreading, and you guys know exactly what that storyline is. We'll go ahead and play that real quick. Hopefully, I cut it up enough. So the first clip that we have this week is between Markeisha and Terry. Now, if you remember Terry, Terry got kicked out of his own house. Now, I've never seen this happen before, and I've never want to experience it. But Markeisha kicked him out of the house after he bought it and moved all of his boxes from his mama's house. Mind you, Boom is in jail where she could go stay in her own house, but she doesn't want to stay over there because Boom put a hit out on her. And she's trying to say that their relationship is severed because of, Terry. No, it's messed up because you're Boom's wife 
and boom don't want his wife who he's still married with with another man if i can't have her he can't eat her he's one of those type of guys he's not after terry he's after you but we do have this clip this week and it's um marquisha so she recovered nicely from the bullet to the uh i was gonna say to the sternum but i guess it was to like the shoulder blade or something here we go Marquise, girl, where the hell you at? Yo, Keish. What you doing busting up in my house like that? First of all, this is my house. Hey, yo, did you call CPS on Lawanda and my kid? Nigga, excuse you? If you did, just tell me. T, I'm a mother. I know what calling the authorities could do to people like us. And how dare you accuse me of some fucked up shit like that? Damn. Look, I, you're right. I'm sorry. We'll let that run one more time. And I want you guys to tell me what you think about Barkeisha in this situation. And are we tired of this shit? Come on, Terry. Barkeisha, girl, where the hell you at? Yo, Keish. What you doing busting up in my house like that? First of all, this is my house. Hey, yo, did you call CPS on Lawanda and my kid? Nigga, excuse you? If you did, just tell me. T, I'm a mother. I know what calling the authorities could do to people like us. And how dare you accuse me of some fucked up shit like that? Damn. Uh, you're right. I'm sorry. Is it a hey, is Marquisha a little disrespectful? Is Marquisha a little disrespectful? Like, uh, you know, this is my house, right? I pay the bills. RC said, why is she still there? All her shit would have been out. Well, remember, you got to be cautious with everything that you say. Remember, Terry told Wanda, hey, she's a mother. And what did she say here? She used the same line that nigga used to say, I am a mother. I would never call the police or child protective services on, on people like us. Do you know what they can do to us? But you sold me some messed up insurance. You sold me some BS insurance and your kids, you don't even know where your kids at. They at grandma's house, but they ain't got no money. Damn. Now everybody tired of Marquisha. Now everybody tired of Marquisha. But when I was going in on Marquisha last season, when she was standing in the rain, everybody was saying, Mo, take it easy. Take it easy. Well, I'd be ahead of my time sometimes. Wait. So just a heads up, there's no official date of when this is. This is just capturing everything that happened in the 90s. So they're mixing a lot of stuff in. But there was a song out uh, that Terry should have known. Everybody saying little things without knowing that life brings a change. What song is that? <laughs> All I keep thinking about is her in my arms. <laughs> they got Terry. Cool it now. Ooh, watch out. You're going to lose control. Man, Terry should have known this from the beginning, man. And that song being out. Terry should have been listening to goddamn New Edition. Cool it now. Ooh, watch out. Man, come on, Terry. It's simple steps that you got to follow. You know what I mean? It's simple steps that you got to follow. Damn. Everybody saying little things without knowing that life brings a change. Yeah, it brings a change, all right? Listen to how she's talking to you. What you doing busting up in my house like that? What you doing busting up in my house like that? What you doing busting up in my house like that? What you doing busting up in my house like that? No, no, I ain't no back. Whoa, 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 Dan. No disrespect, but everybody knows Mo ain't no back. I, I can do lead vocals and I can do background, but one thing I ain't is no background singer. Now, I can do my, I'm, I'm like Ray Charles. Remember Ray Charles was doing, he was doing the background and he was doing the leads. That That's how I am. I, I'm more like Bobby Brown than Ralph, but you get it. You know what I mean? 
I'm not even built like that, Tommy. That ain't even me, yo. Dog, this Marquisha situation is going to have to come to an end quickly. So, with that being said, let's start piecing this together. We got to connect the dots. So, we got that situation. Uh, let me see. Shows. So, all right. We know we are in the trailer. We got to run this one more time. Let me get that one. Marquise, girl, where the hell you at? Yo, Keish. What you doing busting up in my house like that? First of all, this is my house. Hey, yo, did you call CPS on Lawanda and my kid? Nigga, excuse you? If you did, just tell me. T, I'm a mother. I know what calling the authorities could do to people like us. And how dare you accuse me of some fucked up shit like that? Damn. Oh, not, you're right. I'm sorry. All right, so if we go back to the original trailer, this means this is episode three right here. Here we go. I'm here to ensure Terry Jr. is in a safe environment. This crazy. All right, so in the original trailer. Kelsey here. I'm here to ensure Terry Jr. is in a safe Look at Wanda's mama. What up, Brillo? We just piecing this together. We didn't went over Terry and Marquisha, so we had to go back to the original trailer, and we see where CPS is getting called. Now, I'm not sure who called CPS. Wait a minute. If Marquisha didn't call CPS, Wanda didn't call CPS, that only leaves two people. That only leaves two people that will, well, technically three people that could potentially know what's going on to call CPS. Now, let me give you the people that are on my suspect list of calling CPS on Terry and Terry Jr. and Wanda and Terry the fourth. We have culprit number one, Wanda's mama. I don't want Terry living up in here. But why would she call on her grandbaby? Culprit two, maybe Boone called from behind the cells. Fuck that. I'm going to drop the dime on him. You remember when Kane was whooping old boy ass and he was watching the tape? Yeah, he ain't going to be laughing when the feds get this tape. Boom is behind bars. Fuck that. I'm calling up CPS. And then <clears throat> suspect number three. Now, you guys aren't going to like who I'm about to put on this list, but I have justification for why they could be on this list. Of course, we have to look at Detective Bryant. Just like Brillo said, Detective Bryant. Now, there's a. It, it, it probably is Detective Bryant, but my gut is telling me, in no disrespect to what I'm about to say, my gut is telling me that Mama Meach, Miss Lucille, called on her son. Don't tell me that Mama Lucille, don't tell me Mama Lucille didn't call. Give Terry a wake up call. Terry, you need to be at home with that baby. Terry, you need to be treating Wanda right because it ain't too far fetched. She told Wanda to run away with the baby. Miss Lucille, Mama Lucille, please don't say you called him. Now, we leaning towards Detective Bryant being the one that called, put that call in, or maybe even Jen, probably Bryant though. But if it's Mama Lucille, <laughs> what up, Candy? I wouldn't put it past Terry's baby mama's crazy mama to be the one to call. Hey, I was thinking the same, but then I'm looking at the house. Like, no disrespect. Yeah, you know I ain't called CPS. I don't I don't even know how to dial 911. I'm like uh spanky off a of little rascals. Do you know the number for why 911? I don't even know what that number is, let alone nigga. I don't even know how to find the CPS number. Like, who do you call? Is there just like a, you just type in CPS in your city name and it gives you a phone? Like, this is the 90s. I'm pretty sure. It, well, I mean, I don't know how you get in contact with them. This got to be Detective Brian because they typically work with the police department. So this looks like Brian. Yeah, it smells like pig work. Brian and Jen. Detective Jen from seeing him in the restaurant last week. Okay, let me see something. I like where we're going here. That's why we need these live shows. 
Let me let me see something. Let's go back to the conversation last week. Um, let's go back to the conversation last week. And are there any dead giveaways? Show photos, episode two. Now, you remember, Jen's partner said, it's one thing to believe that Terry did it, but it's another thing to prove it. So maybe it is Jen applying that pressure, like, hey, we put that pressure on him, and then we'll see how he's starting to move in the streets. You take the sun away, that means Terry's going to get a little more reckless out here. Hmm. All right. We got some suspects on the board here. That ain't bad. That ain't bad. Brian and Jen. We'll probably put those two in the same category. Mama Wanda, Mama Lucille. And we, well, wait, wait, wait. We really can't, we really can't put it past Markeisha though. We got to leave Markeisha on there. Markeisha did right now. She's a squatter right now. Markeisha is a squatter. Her name ain't on it, on the house. She ain't paying no bills. She just in there farting around and living. Last time we seen her, she was in her drawers with her hair tied up in a bow tie. Now, you know, the only time you see a woman in the bed, mm, I ain't gonna lie to you, she was smelling good. But smelling good and looking good like that, she ain't did shit all day. She was at the crib. Now, you know, when y'all ladies, y'all go to work, when y'all come home, y'all ain't got time to put the lingerie on and, and put the silk and have it off the shoulder. Y'all about to take a shower, get you something to eat. You got to, hey, you got to get your regular clothes on for work tomorrow. But when you Markeisha and your baby daddy name is boom and that nigga locked up and then you got a young nigga with that bankroll on him, a.k.a. Terry, you at the house kicking it. Remember, she came up with a whole list. I want marble flows. I want, uh. Uh, a waterfall bathroom with the, the with, when I walk in, I want as soon as I walk in the bathroom, I want marble flow, I want marble countertop for the sink, you know, what I'm saying the vanity, I want the vanity all marble with gold, I want gold spigots on there. And then, as soon as I walk into my bathroom, I want the shower to turn on, I want the whole place to be a shower. Marquisha's in here living the dream, so we can't, we can't, we can't take her off of the list because if she can get rid of Wanda. That means Terry got more money to spend on her. Terry got more money to spend on her. Now, I know exactly what y'all wear when y'all get off work. I'll be over there. I'll be over there kicking it. But I know one thing. Y'all ain't getting off work and looking like this. Y'all not getting off. If you got a job right now, if you got a job right now, this is for the ladies. If you got a job and you go to work, even if you don't have a job, do you get up and get dressed like this? Because remember, they just moved into this house. This is early in the morning. Who gets up and dressed like this, especially after a long day at work? Who got time to do this? Ain't nobody got time for that unless it's Friday going on to the weekend and you taking some me time. But come on, Marquis, she ain't got no job. Y'all doing shit that you got to have to sleep. You got to have your shoulders covered. You on your phone, you typing, you writing, you ain't sitting there with that, you know what I'm saying, with the shoulder, you know, you know what I'm saying? Get up on that neck, you know what I mean? Then she got the little bow tie. You got to take time for that. Yeah, I ain't never went to no woman's house. She had the bow tie. You see, she ain't never had the bow tie up here. She may have had like a little band or something on her. I don't know what you're bonding or some shit, but she ain't never had a bow tie. The bow tie means you got a lot of free time. And for this to be. Remember, I asked y'all how many microwave ovens were left? It was 30. No one got that answer right. But this was the answer last week. How many microwave ovens are left? Only 30 left. But look, this is early in the morning. The sun's just now coming up. Who's the Magnavox? And you know Marquisha ain't doing nothing. 
Why? What up, Tamika? You know why she ain't doing nothing? Let me show you why she ain't doing nothing. Arkeesha, girl, where the hell you at? Yo, Keish. What you doing busting up in my house like that? First of all, this is my house. Hey, yo, did you call CPS on Lawanda and my kid? Nigga, excuse you? If you did, just tell me. T, I'm a mother. I know what calling the authorities could do to people like us. And how dare you accuse me of some fucked up shit like that? Damn. Uh, I, you're right. I'm sorry. Look how she... Look, wait, 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 wait. We not gonna... Look how she dressing. What that is? Is this silk? What is this, python? Marquisha, Marquisha be putting on the flyest clothes for it to be seven, eight in the morning to not be doing a damn thing. Her kids ain't here. She ain't got no job. We ain't seen her sell insurance since she scammed Terry with that liability insurance. And now she talking about, listen, we know the real story. We know they're together. She held it down. But geez, Louise, Marquisha, help my young boy out, man. CPS is coming over here to take Terry Jr. Now CPS is coming to take Terry Jr. I got to go over there and be a father to Wanda and the little baby that's in her stomach now because Terry has to deal with little Terry being gone. He has to go deal with Marquisha. So now I got to go over there and I got to be the father that stepped up for Wanda. And I don't mind that because Wanda looks good. And I got a free place to stay because we at Wanda's mama's house. Now, I don't know about y'all, but a nigga like me don't like paying rent. So if I can get in where I fit in and go to Wanda's house, and all I got to do is be the father that stepped up to a baby that ain't mine to a dope boy because I know the dope boy got money and I ain't really got to do much, then so be it. I'm just going to go live the life over there at Wanda and Mama Wanda's house. That's just how we kicking it, y'all. Now, you can call me a bum, but one thing you can't call me is a deadbeat because that baby ain't mine. <laughs> All right, man. What else we got up here? Oh, Terry and... Uh... All right. So from the trailer, here's the trailer for episode three. Let's go through this real quick. I just wanted to play the clip that we had of Terry and Markeisha. That's the one that dropped this week. Uh, if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. This is Are We Ready, where we take everything that was officially dropped by BMF and Stars. This isn't anything like any spoilers or anything. Everything that we see here was released. It's the trailer. This was on uh, their Instagram. So it's not like I'm, I'm not giving you guys any spoilers. I don't do that anymore. Back in the day, yeah, but not anymore. We need more manpower. That's why we're going to Jack the Rapper. BMF was built on loyalty and brotherhood. And with these two things, we got a bright future ahead of us. No matter what they throw at us, we ain't skipping no motherfucking beat. Mitch, that's a Miami killer. You think you deserve to have a free pass in my city? The world is my fucking oyster. All right. So we get introduced to the Miami killers. Now, if you look at these, where is it at? I think I got it. All right. So we got Tina telling Meech, hey, man, that's the Miami Killers right there. So we're getting introduced to the villains. Now, I've always said I had a theory that Meech and the Miami Killers are going to get together and go against Techwood. This might be the intro, but we also see some fighting going on. Now, that could be, you know how they do the trailers. This could be chopped up and maybe some of the Techwood guys came in there. Or it could be BMF versus the MK. But I would like to see these two together. And I think. What y'all think? What y'all what y'all think? What y'all what y'all see right here? Why Charles looking like Lou Young? Is that Charles? Don't Charles look like Lou Young? <laughs> now, I wonder if this is before or after. Maybe, all right, maybe Tina is telling Meech, 
hey, that's the Miami killer there. And then they sit down because here. Or he may have been talking to Charles. Oh, that means Charles is down in Atlanta right now. What up, Elder? Charles is in Atlanta. Charles is in Atlanta. Because what is this? Hot. We got the haters down here. It's hot 97. We also know, follow me, follow me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me a second. Give me a second. Y'all remember this photo? This photo dropped before the season came out, before episode one came out. So Charles is in Atlanta helping Meech out. Is he down here making beats with Duffy? And they actually put him in a real studio? Or is this in Detroit? And then he's like, hey, Pops, can you come down to Atlanta? I'm going to do some music stuff. Hmm. Charles got a nice haircut, too. I ain't going to lie. For a guy to not have a job, this nigga Charles got a nice Steve Harvey on him, don't he? Paul's on the own him. So Charles is here in the studio. We got the MK talking to him down here. Oh, wow. Oh, and Lucille's going to still be in Detroit fucking around with Dr. Maurice while he's down in. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. We don't need to be doing this, y'all. We need to leave this relationship. Hey, we can't. No, 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 not her. No, not, not, no, Mama Lucille. Don't tell me that, man. Don't tell me Charles that went down to Atlanta to help young Meech out. And you up here getting filled on by Dr. Meech. He ain't Dr. Meech. This is Dr. Maurice. Oh, Mama Lucille waited till Charles left and tiptoed outside. And this is out in the public, too, at the public playground. Oh, here we go. Okay. I ain't going to lie to you. Lucille and Charles, y'all low-key carried last season. We low-key want to see what the hell's happening with y'all. I mean, I, I, I definitely want to know what's going on with BMF, but now we got to see what the hell's going on. We're supposed to be talking about the Miami killer's down there, but it looked like Dr. M might be the Miami killer up here. I'm talking about the South Beach BBL killer. That's what I'm talking about. Dr. Maurice is up here. And anytime a nigga hugs somebody, when a nigga get to hug it on a woman, look, that nigga close his eyes. Oh, yeah, you know he's in for the long haul. You know what I mean? You get to hug it, and he's like, damn, she smells good. Mm. <laughs> Dr. Maurice, look at the hands. Oh, grabbing on the elbow, a little bit behind the shoulder, about to go to the. Oh, no, don't take your head down the middle of her back. No, 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 no. This is a married woman, Dr. Maurice. It's all making sense now. That's why we do these lives. We piecing this together. He's going to be in Atlanta. She's up here with Doc. Charles is just trying to put some food on the table. Everyone said Charles ain't got no job. As soon as Charles gets down here and starts making beats, mustard on the beat. Oh, you know what I mean? As soon as he get down here and start making beats, who still want to go wild out? He trying to put food on the table. Remember last week, he was trying to paint the walls. He was trying to put new wallpaper up, but he couldn't because Loco came through all because of Meech. 
He's trying to do stuff. And the moment he does, he has to scare people off with a hammer. And now he's producing songs. He's about to get Young Jeezy or Jack the Rapper. And Mama, oh, Mama Beach is out here with goddamn Dr. Maurice. Man, this can't be that episode. Please, 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 please. Dog, we got, I don't know if she knows what's going on right now. I don't think she understands what's going on right now. Why she's up there. While she's up here doing this. She don't even know that the Miami killers are applying that pressure to damn Charles. Charles it. All Charles is trying to do is be a supportive father. Imagine you going to your son's play. Hey, Dad, can you come to the play? Okay, what play you got? We're doing the Easter play. Okay, so what, what part of the play are you in, son? Well, I'm actually the guy that sings. Here comes Peter Cottontail. Up and down the bunny trail. Hippity hoppity Easter's on the way. One, two, three. And then all of a sudden I feel a tap on my shoulder. Tap, tap, tap. Who the fuck? Damn, nigga, what you want? You know I'm the Miami killer. Oh, whoa, 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 my bad. My bad for raising my voice, man. I, I thought you was somebody else. Imagine you at your play and someone's... Nigga, is that a shark tooth or is that a Tyrannosaurus Rex tooth you got on around your neck, nigga? Now, I'm used to my kids. My son has a BMF chain. Ice the fuck out. What is this? What, what is this? Nigga, do you have a shark tooth around your neck? Hey, man, I don't know if you could bring that. That's considered a weapon, man. Or what is this, an arrowhead? Like, I don't know what it is, but I don't think it's allowed in this building, man. It's a little it's a little inappropriate. Shit. This whole time, we've been making fun of Charles for blaming everything on Meech. But every time we look up, though, Meech is getting Terry. I mean, not Terry. Well, he's getting Terry and some shit, too. Every time we look up, though, this nigga, if, if he's getting pressured by MK, every week we look up, this nigga Meech is putting Charles into some situations he don't need to be in. That's it. That's it. I'm not fucking with Meech no more. I know that's my son. I love you. I'm going to love you from a distance. But a nigga with a shark tooth came and started asking me questions. Nigga, I just got in Atlanta last night. I'm trying to go to the Platinum Palace. That's what sold me. My son said, come down here. It's a place called Platinum Palace. And I'm trying to go in there and see if there's any walls that need to be fixed. <laughs> Are there any walls that need to be plugged up? <laughs> I think that's how you wink. Are there any walls that need to be patched up? Okay. Are there any leaks that need to be filled? Okay. I'm trying to go to the Platinum Palace. You know what I mean? I'm trying to go to the Platinum Palace. I didn't expect to come. I, they told me I was going to make beats and I was going to see some women. They didn't say anything about a nigga from Miami with a shark tooth. All right. So we see that these two are going to be talking to each other. Mama Lucille is going to be up there with Dr. Maurice. All right, let me see. No, this is the studio at uh, Duffy's house. So this is Duffy's crib still. We got the fight going on. Let me see something. Jack the Rapper. And they got this nigga little baby in Charles's T-shirt. <laughs> this is Charles's button down. <laughs> hey man, is he supposed to be Jack the Rapper? Is little baby Jack the Rapper? Or 
or is uh what was old boy's name? Rip. Jack the rapper, but I don't I don't think Jack the rapper is Rip. I think that might just be a whole new Uh, you know, got to do some research now. We got to find out who the hell Jack the Rapper is. Jack the Rapper. Um, it's about to go down to Jack the Rapper. Yeah, they're not giving us any names for who the hell Jack the Rapper could be. Because I know we got Rip. Now you think the BMF writers are thinking for morality? Just don't think so. Nah, man. The BMF writers, they straight. So we're going to start showing love to all the writers. Every episode, we got to give a shout out to the writers. You know what I mean? Whoever wrote the episode. All right. So at the Jack the Rapper event, we know Tina is going to say that that is MK. She's saying that that's MK. We've seen MK. The Miami Killers, they were applying pressure to, uh, to Charles. But he also tells Meech, do you think you deserve a free pass in my city? I'm trying to... I'm trying to see some. The police show up. Oh, no, we don't want that. Oh, there's some women in here, though. Charles would take out Jack the Rapper because he was snitch on Meech. I don't know, Coach L. Where are you getting where are you getting this information from? Jack the rapper telling on Meach, or are you just saying he's not a real rapper? You just you trying to say you trying to say that Jack the rapper ain't no real rapper. He ain't really living his rhymes. I'm trying to see if this. When this fight goes down, does it look... Wait, this is Jack the Rapper? Oh, man. Yeah, Coach L, you might be right. If this is Jack the Rapper, you might be right, bro. If this is Jack the Rapper, y'all, yeah, they might have to get rid of him. We'll say the music conference. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's hosted by Hot 97, so I'm guessing... Meech and Duffy are bringing their music up there. They probably. So wait, 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 wait. Let me listen to it one more time. We need more manpower. That's why we're going to Jack the Rapper. BMF. We need more manpower. That's why we're going to Jack the Rapper. So they're probably either bringing their own music and trying to link up with Jack the Rapper. They're going to probably try to get. Welcome to the Jack the Rapper family affair. Meech is trying to get his foot in the door. Him and Duffy, they do have a little production at Duffy's crib. Rip is shot at the moment. So if they can link up with Jack the Rapper, this will plug them in with everybody. They can start getting some money that way and start washing it. But then, like Coach L said, Jack the Rapper can start to feel like, hey, man, y'all more into the dope game than really into my rapping. And he gets to talking. Oh, okay. Okay, we getting somewhere. But we need more manpower. We need more manpower. That's why we're going to Jack the Rapper. BMF was built on loyalty and brotherhood. And with these two things, we got a bright future ahead of us. No matter what they throw at us, we ain't skipping no motherfucking beat. Mitch, that's a Miami killer. You think you deserve to have a free pass in my city? Ah! So this dude gets punched. Let me see. All right. So this gentleman right here that did the punching is this guy right here. So he's next to. So this guy right here, 
doing the punching. Let me just verify this. I don't know. Maybe it ain't. Maybe he got too many stripes. Same here, though. And now this might be him. So this guy's gonna be punching. So is he with BM? He must be with BMF. He's looking out for Duffy and them, and then they get to fighting. The name of the Venice Jack the Rapper? It's an old thing. Oh, okay. Well, shit. <laughs> Teach me something. Let me see something. Jack the Rapper events. Jack the Rapper Atlanta. Ah, okay. Shout out to Wheel 8400. Shout out to Wheel 8400. Jack the Rapper. Oh, James Brown, what's up here? The wildest record convention on earth. Jack the Rapper's family affair brought black music executives and artists together for two decades. Oh, so it's a music conference, Jack the Rapper. All right, I'm gonna do an article on this. Cause I'm not, I'm definitely not about to read all of this. If y'all see somebody doing a Jack the Rapper video, just spam my name in the in the, in the comments. Like, hey man, Will eighty four hundred told us about Jack the Rapper, the Family Affair. So I'm, yeah, I'm gonna read this article tomorrow. I'm definitely not about to read this whole thing tonight. The first Jack the Rapper Family Affair was in nineteen seventy seven. Sutton Gibson. Okay. More bounce to the ounce. Was the one played in the lobby in the elevator. Damn, okay, they were playing Zap Rogers. More bounce to do the ounce. MC Hammer was in there. Okay. Yeah, we y'all want y'all want me to y'all want me to do this article? I'm gonna do it anyway. Fuck what y'all talk about. Boosie Collins was in there. At an okay, here we go. At a '93 conference, I recall sitting in a panel discussion in one of the hotel parlor rooms, only to hear rumbling sound coming from one of the other rooms. Uh oh, here we go. Listen to this, y'all. We in the '90s. Now this is different because all of this shit was going on at the same time. But there's no telling who. Now we got to do some digging. Does Big Meech no sugar? Night. The time that Big Meech saved Suge Knight from being violating his probation. So listen to this. At a 1993 conference, I recall sitting in a panel discussion in one of the hotel parlor rooms, only to hear a rumbling sound coming from one of the other rooms. A chair-throwing, fist-flying commotion had broken out at one of the rap industry panels. Rumors swirled that it was and manifested a manifestation of a growing war between campus rep I mean, camps representing Suge Knight's death row in Campbell Skywalker Records. So there's... There's a history of fights happening at this family affair, Jack the Rapper family affair. Okay, Gibson himself tried and did the best to surf the tidal wave of mayhem. As mayhem increased, the subsequent family affairs, he stood firm. I certainly didn't want that violence any more than anyone else did. Many of my backers blame me because I refused to ban rappers from the convention. But how could I ban the rappers? They are just as viable as any other black music. And I was not about to engage in some of the short modern day segregation practice. I guess it was just one of those cases of having to pay for your beliefs. Well, I was paying. All right. I was flat on my ass. Oh. In 94, the family affair from a, uh, it relocated from Atlanta to Orlando. So this isn't too far fetched to see a fight. It isn't too far fetched to see a fight in BMF when we know that they relocated in 94 because of the fighting. Now, also, 
young hustling entrepreneurs like Sean Puffy, Diddy Do It, Diddy Do It, Combs, aka Mr. Freak Off himself, was documented in 97. Now, if you don't know, there's a alleged connection between Meech and Diddy. Not on no freak off shit, but I'm pretty sure it was some wild shit going on at them parties. But Diddy probably wasn't doing that bullshit that he was doing because, you know, that nigga Big Meech was richer than him back then. And the nigga Meech didn't play none of that shit. But there's an alleged connection that may be. We, well, I mean, Meech about to get out anyway. It's just alleged anyway. But allegedly, they saying that Meech was, you know what I'm saying, Diddy was moving money through, you know what I'm saying, his record company. There's a lot of shit going on behind the scenes. Okay. Will said, I'm a 94 baby, so shout out to Dream Champs. You know, I don't never really watch Dream Champs. Yeah, I'm a, uh, Yeah, I'm going to go through. I'm going to go through this article. Hold on. Let me see something. So this is medium.com. Big Meech. Jack the Rapper. Family Affair. Atlanta. Jack Daniels. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna do some I'm gonna do some research on that, but I'm definitely gonna I'm gonna I'll read that whole article and I'm gonna try to like point out some of the the key points. Hopefully they show us a little bit more because I did not I did not know that. Hey, thank you though, Will. Thank you for that. See, they even talking about it right there. Did Combs take money from BMF to fund Bad Boy? So it's a lot of shit that goes on behind the scenes. All right, let's keep let's keep it going. So we know that there's gonna be a fight. Jack the rapper isn't an actual rapper. You know, you learn something every day. That's one thing you know I don't mind. As long as y'all teaching me shit, I don't care. Let's get it. So Jack the rapper family affair. They need extra muscle. Now Meech is right because we do know that he's gonna run into the Miami Killers here. Make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button if you're new to the channel. Um, do they show Loco in the trailer? No, they don't. No, they don't. So even me just getting in on some of the action. All right, cool. All right, cool. So from the tra <clears throat> from the trailer, we really didn't see much. We know this event is going to be going down. Terry with Markeisha, Terry and his son. It looks like Charles is going to be down in Atlanta at this point. Mama Meach is going to be up there doing what she got to do. Also, we see... I'm not sure who Meech is shooting at. I mean, we know he ain't going to hit shit, but Stax is running about the house. Unless he got a gun, I don't know why he's running out of the house. Yeah, Elder, that's what they allegedly they say. They said, you know what I'm saying, BMF is running some money through Bad Boy. And that's how he got started. Well, not how he got started, because he got started by uh, Clyde Davis, and that's a whole nother story here. That's some freak off story right there, for real, for real. But you understand. Um, What do we believe is happening here? Someone tried to run up in the spot and steal something, and Meech and them had a fire back, or they went to a crib, and somebody was in there, and they chased them out. What direction do you think that this is going to be going? Cause we know Meech can't step on nothing. 
We know Meech can't step on nothing. So is he shooting somebody that tried to, well, shooting at somebody that tried to rob them? Or they showed up somewhere and it was just, hey, man, it's on site. Them Techwood boys is over here, Meech. Damn, Techwood. We got to do something about that, man. Give me the, give me the two. So Meech gets the shooting. Uh, the police come and break up the fight. What else? Oh, we got uh, Terry. Outside of Terry and his relationship problems, because we know he has issues with Markeisha. He has issues with uh, Wanda, both of those at the moment. Stacks don't seem about that life because where is Stacks trap at? That's what I'm saying. Like, why is he running out the house unless they chasing after somebody? Or maybe they... Wait. What if, just hear me out, this is just me throwing something out there. We don't, we don't know, we don't know. But we're going to put this on our little theory board. What if Stax had what was left of the work? Because remember, he told Meech, before they met Loco, he was like, I know some people that we can get the rest of that stuff off. What if... They came and robbed Stacks. That's why we don't see him with his gun. They like broke in. They tried to rob him. And Meat showed up and seen him running out. And he's trying to chase him down and shoot at him. So let's say Stacks gets robbed. And Meat starts shooting at them. You know what I mean? Because I'm trying to see why Stacks running out of here out of breath. Like, <gasps> hey, Meat, get them niggas. That's Stacks in the doorway. That's what we're saying. Where's Stack's gun at? He ain't got no gun. You just out here living? Because I think we see. Hold on. Is this it? White collar. Is this the scene? Y'all tell me. Y'all tell me. If, if 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 I'm connecting the dots, just let me know. So is this scene part of this scene? Mode and went back to the beginning. We got a stripe. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So this might be before they pulling up to the Jack the Rapper family affair. Hey, y'all, I need some muscle. I need, we about to go to the Jack the Rapper. We trying to get me and Duffy trying to get our music in there. My pops is coming down. We gonna need some muscle. But would that mean someone drove by and started shooting? Oh. Maybe it's not a robbery. Maybe. Follow me. Maybe this is after the fight with MK at the Jack the Rapper family affair. He goes over here. Hey, Stax, man, this shit was crazy, bro. Them niggas is in there acting a damn fool today. Miami killers come through and they start shooting shit up or they fought Techwood in there. Miami killers and Meech and BMF just get into it, but they don't actually fight. And it's Techwood. And in Techwood, they come and do some sliding. They shoot up at the house after Meech then went over there and told them what happened. They running out and trying to shoot back. Maybe Stax got a damn chopper and he got it low. You know, you're trying to stay low because you don't want to get shot. You know what I mean? So he low and he about to pull that motherfucking ta 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 ta. But this don't look like no trap house, though. These look like nice houses. You got to remember, this is Atlanta, Georgia. These are nice houses. Like, look at the interior on here. This house is a two-story. Look, they got a finished deck on here. This is a finished deck that meets is upon. Look at this house over here. This ain't no trap house. 
I mean, it, well, I mean, me and them are getting money. So they trap houses were a little different than what we're accustomed to. So their trap houses were mini mansions. So you might be right. This might be the trap. But I'm thinking this might be where Stax is at. And he pulls up and someone probably drives by and does some shooting. They come outside and get the shooting back. Hey, man, she's crazy, man. Because let me see. All right, so Meech got the... What is this? It ain't no members only. But he got on the jacket with the black and with the white tee on. Let me see what he's wearing at the Jack the Rapper event. So he put on a suit here. Whoa, 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 whoa. What are we doing? What are we doing? Wait, 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 wait. What are we doing? What are we doing? Here we go. We got it. We got it, y'all. We got the storyline. We need more manpower. Listen up. We got it. We need more. We need more manpower. Black jacket, white tee. Black jacket, white tee. Black jacket, white tee. Hey, we need more manpower. Someone pulls up and gets to either bucking or some bullshit. They come outside, they get shooting. Now, he already said they need more manpower. So all of this is taking place before the Jack the Rapper family affair. Then after this, that's when they go up there. Tina tells Meech that that's the Miami killers over there. So either Techwood did this and he's going over there to talk to them like, hey, we can squash this. Because remember, when they were sitting down last week, he told Duffy and Stax, he said, when they were right here, he tells them while they're eating, listen, Miami killers should get down with us. We don't have to be beefing with them. Now let's go one step further and see where Stax is sitting at and see what the what it looks like behind them. Okay, we got tan walls, not behind them, but behind them. You know what I mean? Oh, no, we got to go back to episode one. Hold on. Nope, that ain't it. Give me a second, y'all. Okay. Boom. There we go. There we go. We got it. So this is the living room. Remember when they were in the studio... In episode one, Meech is talking to everybody. This is the living room. We got the blinds here. The decor on the wall right here going up the stairs. That's right here. So, all right. They're come, they came over to talk to Stax before they went to the Jack the Rapper family affair. So, this is before the family affair gets to crack it. Hey, bro, we need more manpower. Meech is in the studio when he says that. We need more manpower. We need more manpower. So he's by the booth. All right, cool. There we go. There we go. We piecing it together right there. So prior to going to it, they go over. Well, they bring stacks in them over. So this is at uh, Duffy's house. Duffy and Meech, where they do the beats at. Hey, stacks. we need more manpower. And we do see little baby pull up with them. Now, we don't see stacks. We don't see stacks at the Jack the Rapper family affair, but we do see we do see him. Now, why would they come out the house? Did someone drive by? Was it Techwood? Oh. Techwood came by. Remember, MK ain't beefing with Meech at this point. Meech went over there to try to talk to them at the club. But there was no issues. 
But after that, we seen Techwood come over there and they dropped off uh, dice. Now, maybe they came through and Meech is like, hey, listen, we need to have some more people with us, some more muscles when we go up there. But when we see Meech and Tina, she tells him that that's the Miami killer. It's not to be on no beef. And with him asking Meech, do you think you deserve a free pass? It's because Meech is probably with the proposition, hey, let's work together. We can get this money. Hey, do you think you deserve a free pass in my city? And they get into it with Techwood up there. And it's not the MK that they fight. Ah, uh, okay. Don't do it, Mo. It's Thursday. It's Thursday, Mo. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it, Mo. Don't do it, I say. Go ahead and put that on there. Meach links with MK and fights Techwood. All right, Mo. I see what you're doing here. All right, cool. I mean, that's pretty much it with that. That's pretty much it with that. All right, then we got Terry's last part, and then we'll go into like some free time where we can just start throwing theories together that we could put up on the board for tomorrow. We need more manpower. That's why we're going to Jack the Rapper. BMF was built on loyalty and brotherhood. And with these two things, we got a bright future ahead of us. No matter what they throw at us, we ain't skipping no motherfucking beat. Meach, that's a Miami killer. You think you deserve to have a free pass in my city? The world is my fucking oyster. So they sitting outside. So maybe someone just drove by. Maybe they didn't do like an actual drive by. Maybe they drove by and they seen them. Because Meech was already outside. Oh, and Stax is ducking to come outside. So Stax wasn't, he wasn't running. He was ducking to like look out the door. Okay. I thought Stax was being scary. No, Stax is just ducking his head. Then he comes out and he probably gonna get the bucket. Hopefully. All right. Uh, we got Henry. Remember, Henry got. I can't say she got finesse. What we can say about Henry is remember, a deal is a deal until the deal is done. And if you don't shake hands or dap up, hey man, that verbal agreement, unless you can get audio of it, it ain't gonna hold up nowhere. Not in court, not here, not no way, not no how. Outside of outside of seeing the flamethrower with Henry, how dangerous do you think she's going to get? And are we going to see Bryant working with her in episode three? Because at this point, we know that she was trying to get at Terry. She did. Well, we can't say how dangerous she was. She did kill Peaches. She knocked Peaches out. But she can't be. Dana says she's out of control. I mean, but she could. She she has a restriction because remember her dad said, "Man, you can't be wilding out out here. You still got to do what I say." I want to see where Henry's character goes, but after one episode, like Dana said, she's out of control. So after seeing her for one episode and potentially about to use her as a connect and her no longer being the connect, it's kind of like, man, she's going to be wilding out at this point because she ain't really making no money. She's in the suburbs. And with Meech and Terry flooding the streets with their new connect loco, all she's going to do is be on, uh, I, I was going to say on defense, but no, she's about to be on the offense. She's about to be the aggressor. What up, Sharon? So 
One thing I can say. Now we see why the flamethrower comes into play. At this point, what does she have to lose? Initially, I was looking at it like, okay, the flamethrower, I mean, it's still a little far-fetched, but it's no different than, you know, niggas in Chicago's got RPGs and shit. So it's, it's not too far-fetched. I'm pretty sure they have flamethrowers. But now we're looking at it as her father has money. She does have a little bit of money, but what does she have to lose? She was supposed to be the connect for Terry, 28 a brick, but that that's over with. And you're trying to make a name for herself in the streets since she is a woman. Exactly. So, yeah, you, you may have been right. I, I, I want to see how it plays out. Like, how crazy are they going to get her? I mean, we've seen some, like, if we're being honest, you remember when Tommy unalive Proctor, that was a little, you rat piece. Like, that was a little far-fetched. But we've seen it, and we was like, all right, cool. We'll roll with it. You know what I mean? We seen Braden shoot a gun out of Kane's hand. We're like, eh, okay. So, I mean, she is going down the path of where she's losing it. Because Blaze said her dad wants somebody to work up under. Now, we're assuming that it's going to be Detective Brian. So, if Detective Brian is working up under her and Blaze is giving her direct orders of what to do and how to use them, she could definitely be tripping out, like, fuck this. I'm about to do my own thing, and that's where the flamethrower comes into play. Elder said she needs one more episode. <laughs> and said that's real life. He had a chopper. Yeah, he did, but come on, man. Come on, man. He ain't doing that like... The way him and him and Ghost were moving, they ain't moving like that in the crib like that. You know what I mean? Maybe how Monet did Mecca. Maybe how Tariq did um what's the boy name? Stern's boyfriend. You see, maybe like that, but this nigga was in there wilding out though. Like, come on, man. And Tommy. Let's not even let's not even get on Tommy, Mr. The feds know this nigga's alive in Chicago, but ain't telling niggas in New York that the nigga's alive and trying to take him down single-handedly when this nigga been on the run for fucking four seasons. All right, so we we kind of, I don't know, man. I don't know where we stand with Henry's character because they got her yelling here. They didn't really show her talking in the trailer, so it, it, it has you wondering, like, all right, where we're at right now, okay, we know she's wild, but to what extreme is it going to get to? Like, okay, we got the flamethrower catching somebody on fire. That's not too far-fetched, I mean, let me just look up any articles. Flame. Yeah, I ain't seeing nothing on there with that, but I mean, that would be some wild shit. <laughs> all right, so all right, that, that's Henry. We talked about Meech. Terry, uh, I mean, Terry's only issue in Detroit right now is Detective Brian. We believe that Brian's the one that called CPS on him this week. Either Brian or Jen. 
Uh, I don't see anything talking about Kevy Kev. Not our Kevy Kev that be in the chat, but young Kevin. I don't see anything. Let me, oh, let me just verify. Did they show anything talking about Brian and them? I don't even see Detective Gene or Brian in the trailer. I don't see none of them. Damn. All right. Well, cool. I mean, that's all we got. The trailer is really the Jack the Rapper event and Terry, to be honest with you. So I don't, we don't, we don't really have much for this week. I mean, we know Mama Meach, AKA Miss Lucille, is going to be up there wilding out. Someone to kiss, someone to miss when you are away. Damn. I wish I had me a high school sweetheart so she and I could link up and just think about all the good times. Damn. I feel like. I feel like Polo the Don. Every bitch I have a picture of my on their wall. Damn. No, 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 no. This just got to be. Is this considered a friendly hug? Is this considered let's catch up with each other? This ain't nothing serious, is it? Like I said, I never had a high school sweetheart. So I don't know how that goes. And a lot of the, you know what I'm saying? The, I did have this one girl. She said she had a crush on me senior year and I never talked to her. But when I mean, we was in art class, I tried to get at her a couple of times. She was bullshitting. But after we graduated, she oh, you should talk to me. But if I, I seen her once, probably like seven, eight years ago, seen each other at like Walmart or no, it was Target because I came back in town. We was in Target and you know, I seen her. Gave her a hug, but I didn't hug her like this. This is a friendly hug, though, right? Yeah, I knew a lot. I knew a lot of women in my lifetime. You know what I'm saying? You got to understand, I'm almost 40. Just like doctor. Hey, I'm a doctor. Dr. Maurice is a doctor. We meet a lot of people on our day-to-day -day interactions. You know what I mean? You forget, I've been living overseas. I did four. This would be five years overseas. I used to travel full-time from the age of 18 up to 24. So for six years, I was always on the road. I was always different places, meeting different people. So yeah, I know, I know, you know what I'm saying? I know a few people. But it's just this is just a hug, right? A consoling hug. There we go. See, that's why I fuck with my nigga Ant, man. It's just, hey, this is just, hey, how you been? You know what I'm saying? I, it's good to see you. You smelling good. Oh, your skin so soft. Like, this ain't nothing here. This ain't nothing here. Hands above the waist. You already know how I like to get when I put my hands up on your hip. When I dip, you dip, we dip. But this is just, this is friendly here. Now, have I hugged anyone's wife like this? Nah. Nah, I ain't never hugged nobody's wife now. Now, that, 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 that's where you draw the line. But he is a doctor, though. We got to cut him some slack. Like, come on, y'all. We not going to discredit a successful black man. This is Dr. Maurice here. This isn't Smojo. This isn't Maurice from the block. You know what I'm saying? This is Dr. Maurice. This is a doctor, you know what I mean? We got to cut him a little bit of slack. Like, come on. We got to show this man some respect. He earned that doctor, you know what I mean? We can't just call him Mr. Maurice. We got to call him doctor. So this hug is appropriate. This hug is appropriate. We'll go ahead and put that out there. Now, on Lucille, if there's anything inappropriate, it will be on Lucille because Dr. Maurice, the doctor, is single. 
So wait a minute. Wait a let hold on. Whoa, 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 whoa. We're not doing this. Hold on. Now, on the right, we have a loving, caring husband trying to be there for his wife. He said when he hugged her and he held her, he could feel that she loved him still. Now, this is him hugging her from behind. Dr. Maurice is hugging straight up. This is a face-to-face -face encounter here. Your chin on her forehead, that's kind of intimate. You know what I mean? When you hug somebody, you ain't that close. I ain't about to put my beard on a woman's forehead. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know what I mean? If I hug it, it's like, hey, okay, cool. But Charles is doing the, the wrap around. And what does he look? See, y'all looking at all the wrong things. I'm going to tell you what you need to look at. Someone, someone tell me what's going on in both of these pictures. Someone tell me what's going on in both of these pictures. I told y'all about them hugs with your eyes closed. Whenever a nigga get to hugging with his eyes closed, this nigga has smooth operator. Smooth operator. Whenever a nigga gives a woman a hug and that nigga closed his eyes and he give that deep. That's what they mean when they say be his peace. Ladies, if you can get the nigga to close his eyes and give that deep. We'd all been there before, fellas. We'd have all been there before. But when you close the eyes on the hug, it means something different. I don't know about y'all, but it makes your toes curl and it just makes your hands balled up like, what the fuck is taking the control of me? And you just... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You get that little, you get that little, that little squeeze to her mm -hmm. and you kind of lift her up. You don't pick her all the way up off, off the ground. Just a little bit. Just as you're saying, she on the tippy toes a little bit. Mm -hmm. Oh. It's been a while, fellas. It's been a while since I got one of them hugs in, but cheese always. What has it been? Five days? What was Sunday? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Yeah, about five days, Saturday night. Yeah, it's been about five days. Long five days, too, man. Baby, come back. You're all I need. That's what Dr. Maurice is feeling like. That's what Charles is feeling like. Damn. Damn. Damn, man. That's one thing I don't like to see your brother losing his... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Every three minutes and 39 seconds. I tell y'all, I don't make this up. Every three minutes and 39 seconds, we lose a brother to the streets. Now, I'm not talking about dead or in jail. I'm talking about losing his woman, his pride, his dignity, his ego. See, luckily for me, I can't lose my pride, my dignity, or my ego because I ain't got no pride. I don't set goals in life. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I ain't got no dignity. <laughs> no dignity. No doubt. You see what I'm saying? What up, Tracy? 
hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. We got some free time now. We didn't get much in the trailer for this week. We did have the Markeisha and Terry, but I mean, we all know about this part. You know, I mean, we're trying to avoid it as much as possible. Markeisha, girl, where the hell you at? Yo, Keish. What you doing busting up in my house like that? First of all, this is my house. Hey, yo, did you call CPS on Lawanda and my kid? Nigga. Hey, he played that smooth. He played that smooth. He said, this is my house. And then, hey, fuck all that. Did you call, you know what I'm saying, Child Protective on my, on my kid? Now, I ain't gonna lie to you. Yo, Keish. What you doing busting up in my house like that? First of all, this is my house. Hey, yo, did you call CPS on Lawanda and my kid? Nigga. I ain't gonna lie to you. If we having a conversation like this and you call me a nigga, that's kind of a turn on. But don't just call me like don't don't call me nigga in regular conversation. Now, if it's kind of like, hey, what the fuck, man? You took hey, you took that fifty euro off the counter, nigga. I ain't take that money. Oh, okay, cool. You can call me that. That's kind of attractive. That's kind of sexy, Marquisha. I did like that. I ain't gonna lie to you. I did like that. Okay, that's just me personally. Maybe maybe that's just me. Maybe that's just me, but when she said, nigga, excuse you, hey, motherfucker, okay. You got a little bit of bark over there, don't you? Burp, burp, burp. Oh, no, that was kind of attractive to me. That was kind of a turn on, but, man, I wish we could watch Tubi movies. I ain't going to lie to you. Marquise, girl, where the hell you at? Yo, Keish. What you doing busting up in my house like that? First of all, this is my house. Hey, yo, did you call CPS on Lawanda and my kid? Nigga, excuse you? If you did, just tell me. T, I'm a mother. I know what calling the authorities could do to people like us. And how dare you accuse me of some fucked up shit like that? Damn. Uh, I, you're right. I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> <laughs> she said I'm a mother she didn't think about none of that when she was riding with this young ass nigga Terry and going to stay at them hotels and Boom was wilding out was she thinking about being a mother then I don't know hit that like button hit that subscribe button man. we got some free time what we got man what y'all think about the episode what y'all think about the episode what are we going from what we see From what we see, what are we thinking this episode is going to be? I'm putting it in like a, I'm, I'm keeping it in the same area, the same realm, six and a half or seven. They, I don't know, man, maybe, maybe, maybe. They're going to have to show me something. The teaser for Ghost, I ain't going to lie to you, the teaser for Ghost was a little bit better than the trailer for this. And they didn't even have no words in that. Now, we got some free time. I'm going to show y'all what I'm talking about. I had to put music over it, but look at the ghost finale. Let me ask y'all something. Is this Truth Nightclub? Did Tariq get the club at the end? And that's how they ended the same way they... Woo, they ended the same way they started it. Tariq finally made it out of all the bullshit. I oh, don't know, man. I'm kind of hyped. But I think they saying it's going to be 10 episodes for each one. So it's technically five seasons, but they're just going to run it all concurrently.
Hey, that music I put on there kind of went with that mug. I don't know, man. Uh, I'm I'm with you on that, Kendall. That's why if you haven't joined the Discord, it's pinned in the chat. But we were all talking about this, so we got a different, a lot of different opinions. We were laughing at uh, what's the shit? The shy. Remember, everyone was like, "Oh, in the shy, man, eight episodes, eight episodes." Just to turn around and have Ghost do the same thing, ten and ten, for the last season. I don't, I don't know, man. It's gonna be tough how they end it. I might do a live on this. I might do a live this weekend. I got to do Shogun uh, recap. Like I said, right now I'm kind of beefing with FX and Fox right now until we can get this Tubi thing situated. If you didn't hear, I got two copyright strikes. That means one more. It's over with for me. It's over with for me. Well, wait, wait, wait. I got one strike. I got one copyright strike, but there was another video that got like taken down. They didn't give me a copyright strike for it, but they took it down. And then the other ones, they just got copyrights on them. So I don't, I don't know what's going on. So if you check on my channel, like once again, all the Tubi shit's gone now. So I don't know like what is what. So I, I, I just had to remove everything, man. We had a little setback. But once I seen that strike, I said, no, we can't risk losing the whole channel. So I had to, I, I removed everything. So we're going to be moving Tubi over to either Rumble or Patreon. Patreon is only going to be like $2. But also on the Patreon, we're not just going to be doing Tubi movies. We're going to be doing real movies over on Patreon. We're going to get over there. We're going to do the real movie. We go got to do Boys in the Hood. We got to do the House Party series. So that would be like our Saturday stuff. But that's where we're at right now, y'all, you know. We kind of got tripped up out here, but it is what it is. Can we set some ground rules regarding Tubi? Yeah, there's some ground rules. <laughs> no Tubi on my YouTube channel no more until I can get these strikes off of here and figure it out. Because I asked them some questions in the email. Like I said, I sent four emails or four different videos, and I was asking, of course, I know the one that's a Tubi original. Okay, y'all own that. But when I'm getting people recommending, like, directors and stuff saying, hey, can you watch my movie? Am I allowed to watch those? Because why did I get copyrights on those? I don't know, man. It's a, it's a dirty game out here. You know, we just trying to survive. We just trying to eat and enjoy. Suburbia Jones, Team Charles in the building. I know I can always depend on you. Team Charles in the building. We headed to ATL. We got to go to the Platinum Palace. Now, I don't know about y'all, but I do want to get in the Platinum. Ooh, Angel. I forgot all about Angel. Sometimes I get distracted, but yeah, I forgot all about Angel. Rubs hands like bird, man. Oh, and uh, the officer, I've been calling her Ambrose, is uh, Amberson. Yes, yeah, Amberson. I was calling her Ambrose, but it's Kobe Amberson. Detective Jen's partners, Amberson. Amberson. There we go, Amberson. Yeah, you would think. But that's what I was asked. That like that's what I asked him though, Elder. I'm like, man, some of the movies they aren't to be original, so we might not be able to watch to be originals. But now it's got me wondering about the documentary. Like I said, we just got like I, I removed the Griselda documentary off of here too, and that shit just hit a hundred thousand. Well, it's like a hundred and ten thousand, but I removed it because it was a to be doc, and I was like, man, then all of our behind the uh. Behind the crimes, all of those are two. I'm like, man, I'm not risking it, man. I, I just can't. I really don't know what the fuck is going on, y'all. I don't. <laughs> so when I start the Patreon up, I'm going to try to keep it as cheap as possible, like $2. So I get a dollar, they get a dollar. I'm $2, and we will have movies throughout the week on there. But we'll be watching real movies, too, so we'll figure that out. What else we got? What else we got? Uh, this weekend? We 
We're going to go ahead and plug it up. I should have my homeboy coming through. We might do a test run on Saturday just to see if we can get the audio and stuff together, do a little walkthrough. Uh, I have a guy that does comics on his YouTube. So whenever we got Marvel, move, uh, Marvel movies or TV shows, I'll be having an expert come over. I'll continue to break it down, do my recaps, but all the important information and details that I know nothing about, we'll have someone in-house that'll break that down for us. So I got a lot of things planned. It's just, you know, it took me some time. April, it'll be six months since I relocated. I got the crib, you know what I'm saying? So what together, the table came in, you know what I'm saying, my little table. So we're going to have the drink of the evening right there. We're going to move that over a little bit. We had a microphone set up over there. I got to give me another light because I'm probably going to move one of these. But I ain't going to lie to y'all. I was trying to get I was trying to get a third camera because Amazon hit me up and said, hey, this wasn't delivered. It'll be here two days later. So I was going to try to get the refund and then just buy another one so I could have three 4K ones. But they end up delivering this. I got two 4K cameras. Uh, the other camera over there is the 1080. We got two mics. I'm going to need one more mic in case we have two guests. Yeah, man, you know, we just slowly putting shit together, man. I had this vision back when we was in California, not yay, and now look at us. We on our way. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, y'all. Support the channel, Cash has pinned in the chat, Super Chats. I appreciate all of it, you know what I'm saying? Anything helps, but everything goes back to the, back to the studio, so. Oh. And I met a bartender. So we might have a bartender in here on some of our lives on Fridays because I want to try different drinks. So I'm just going to have a bartender. She already told me some good prices. Now, if she comes through, I don't know what kind of drinks I'm going to have. But yeah, I'm going to have her making ra random drinks for us. Or I'll put up like a poll and I'll see, have her make those for me. And I'll just try different drinks while we on the lives on Fridays doing our BMF, our power breakdowns. I got a lot of stuff in my mind. A lot of stuff in my mind. We'll figure it out, though. I missed the last episode. So I watched Shogun. I just didn't record it. And we were supposed to go live yesterday, but hey, man, them copyright strikes got hit. I was like, man, I gotta, I got other shit to take care of. <laughs> I got other stuff to take care of, man. I ain't gonna lie to you. I normally don't give a shit about anything. I mean, I got those. Yeah, it kind of hurt because I, I, I did remove like. like half a million views off of my channel. And I know I got an audience that I built off of uh, like the Tubi movies. So it, it kind of hurt because I know that's what they came to my channel for. But hey, man, you got to do what you got to do, man. Hey, thank you, Sharon, for that $2 super sticker. Damn. Yeah, we'll put up a... Yeah, because I'm going to have to... So, oh, I was telling Kendall... Over here, I'm getting a shelf, so we're going to have all the liquor lined up over here. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to get the, you know what I'm saying, a little shelf over here so I can start putting all the different bottles and, you know, different things from every country that I go to. I'm going to try to get a bottle of something. So whenever uh, we do get the bartender here, I'm going to have a little miniature bar set up over here. I should be getting my mini fridge the 1st of April, I want to say. The end of the month, I'll be the end of the month. I'm going to London for four days. So the beginning of April, well, not the beginning of April, probably like mid April. I'm trying to get my mini refrigerator. Get the little bar put over here. Yeah, I'm not, I don't know, man. We just we just going, man. We just going. But I appreciate all y'all, man. Y'all been on this journey with me. I told you we were going to relocate. We made it over here and shoot. Just one step at a time, man. One step at a time. But, you know, Fridays, I got to be at work at 630. Yeah, hit that like button. Oh, so like I said, unofficially got that job. So we might be doing midday lives. But yesterday at the airport, 
one of the supervisors there emailed me and was like, hey, apply for this job. So you should, I might be moving over to the other job. And then within like a month or two, hey, moving on up to the east side. I finally got a piece of the pie. Now, if I get over to that, I mean, definitely make it way more money. But the hours, 8 to eight to 4.30, I think he said, 8 to 4.30. But you can come in early as 6.30. So I'm going to try to do like 6.30 to like 2.30. So we get us a midday live. I can hit the gym from 2.30 to 4.30. Get back home, shower, take a uh, you know what I'm saying, take a shower, hit the live up at five o'clock, which would be eleven in the morning. Boom, get off of there about seven o'clock, two hours, and then we can knock out our nine o'clock lives, three p.m. Eastern. Yeah, man. So <sighs> that's where we at right now. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. I gotta get up out of here, take me a shower, call it a night tomorrow night. Um, remember, you guys are five hours behind, so it'll be four p.m. Eastern tomorrow. Until the end of the month, I'm five hours ahead of East Coast. So 4 p.m. tomorrow. No, 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 Tomorrow I'm starting at 8 p.m. my time. You guys are so it'll be 3 p.m. Yeah, 3 p.m. Eastern tomorrow. 3 p.m. Eastern tomorrow. That's what time we're doing it. Man, I got my times all mixed up. 3 p.m. Eastern tomorrow. We're doing on the clock BMF episode three. Y'all be there. I gotta find me an outfit. Gotta figure out how we're gonna do this thing. Have I thought about putting a gym in my crib? So yeah, down in my basement. So like I got a up under up under my studio is my garage. So I got a two car garage up under there. But then I got a full storage room, which is technically another bedroom. So my my whole compound is five bedrooms. But the bedroom downstairs in the garage, I got that as a storage room. And then I got a laundry room with a you know saying with space in there. So I thought about putting some shit in there. But I work on the base, so. Every base that you're at, they got it. Well, a majority of the bases, they got gyms. So it's like, mm, that's just less money that I got to spend because I can go to the base whenever. But I was trying to get this roll machine. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I like biking. So I'm trying to get this roll machine. Uh, if it's still for sale, because one of these guys in the group chat, they got a brand new one, but they about to leave. If I can get this roll machine, I'll definitely buy that and put it in my uh, in my storage room and use that. But yeah, right now we, we you know what I'm saying? We cutting that weight because come woo we come May. Gotta have that shirt off. We gotta start hitting up Spain. So we gotta drop from 191 to about 180-ish, 176. You know what I'm saying? I think we're down to like 188 right now. So you know, we on the way. We on the way. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. I'll see you guys tomorrow. That will be 3 p.m. Eastern. BMF on the clock. Pay attention to the episode. I'm rating it a six and a half, seven already. And we'll go from there. But if you don't take anything from my channel, remember you can run, you can't hide. Cash app is pinned in the chat. Support the channel. M-O-E-D-O-T-J. 50,000 subscribers. We tiptoeing until we figure out what the hell Tubi got going on. And maybe after that three months, or if they email me this weekend, we might be back on Tubi. We just can't watch Tubi originals. This is episode three, y'all. This is up. No, nah, I can't. Nah, I ain't doing no spin class. I ain't doing no spin class. If I'm gonna do that, I'll go. I'll go buy a bike. There's like a, I think a, twenty. No, I think it's like an eighteen kilometer trail. Down the street from my house. So all right, we'll do that. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. I'm out for real this time. I'll see you guys tomorrow. And if you don't take anything from my channel, just remember you can run, but you can't hide. Tomorrow's Friday. That means you need to skate on into the weekend. Be safe. Don't drink and drive. It's Thursday night. And you know it's happy hour on Thursday night. So we'll get you a drink. And remember, fellas, if you find that special somebody, if you find her, when you hug her, you make sure you give her a little squeeze and the deep inhale and close your eyes. Let her know it's real. Let her know it's real. <laughs> I'm out, man.